All right, so uh, we've got a couple of handouts uh, that are uh, coming towards you uh, for today's lecture. I've got one so far, and then we'll look at the other one a little bit later. So if you go back to the network folder, I've got a new handout to look at. So to remind you, that's on your desktop. <clears throat> you can open computer. And then in the section of network location, you can open classroom data drive Z. Z is in zebra. And then our class, Campus SEO, you can copy the um, client marketing strategy document. Copy that to your desktop or your flash drive, and then we'll look at it. I have the printer off at the moment. You can print a little later. But this is another one of these documents that you could fill out if you want, the client marketing strategy. So let's look at that one. Go ahead and open that document. We'll talk about it. We'll make notes about it. We'll uh, ask questions about it. And we'll see that this is another document that is very useful um, in terms of creating your strategy for what SEO will be. I have it in the example, as I said before, that if my company were being hired for this, what we need to know as much as possible about the company to do a good job for the company. So this is if it's your own, you'll fill it in with your own information. It's not anything you need to turn in, but I can look at it if you would like me to. So there's the cover page again. Uh, date so that you can um, see how the document has evolved and here there's uh, several big sort of questions and goals with definition and example so looking at the first one what do you want to accomplish you have a presence online for a reason are you trying to sell something build awareness are you artistic do you have a group uh, some sort of membership unit uh, take a moment to write about what you want to accomplish with your online presence. Now, there are several keywords here. Um, the concept of just online presence. That includes your website and your Facebook and Snapchat or your email uh, newsletter or whatever. I, I count all of that as your online presence. Anything, anything on your website, on your Twitter and such. So. Once we know that, that it, it's very broad, what is your presence? Okay, then we get to the reason. And that is often um, hard for people to, uh, to go, to get to beyond, oh, well, I, I want to sell products. And that's fine as a starting point about, well, what does the company, what is the company trying to do online? Sell products. That's a good starting point. I have the example. Remember, uh, last week I talked about this example company in the document Vic.co. If you don't remember what they were about, this, it's summarized here. Vic.co wishes to create a powerful social media presence because we want to interact with existing customers through word of mouth, reach new customers. So we want to connect with people on Instagram in a very visual way. So this could have easily have been Vic.co makes websites. And that's fine that is an answer and, and that would work but I was having a discussion about someone in the class last night it was a different class it was a WordPress class building websites in WordPress uh, but he hit the nail on the head when we started to talk about stuff from this class in that class and a lot of the concepts in my different classes kind of bleed into each other he was saying last night, he suddenly had like an epiphany. He's like, well, all of this stuff that you're telling us about, it sounds like this should all be, you know, put together and everyone should follow it and adhere to it. And, you know, the graphics people should be looking at this and um, the social media people should be looking at that. And I said, yes, you should have a Bible. You should have a document, a master document that guides your whole business online. And these documents that I'm giving you are those starting points. Simply in a Word document, um, having all of this, uh, page one, page two, page three, having all of this consolidated in one place is, is the point. I'm giving it to you in a couple of separate documents, but 
It might be easier for you to think about them as one big document. This is what I need to think about when I do social media. This is what I need to think about when I write my keywords. This is what I need to think about when I uh, write blogs and such. It's all related to each other, so uh, it is like a big guiding document. And um, it's a very important one that I would um, try to create as soon as possible and then uh, adhere to it. That's the point of it. Follow what this is about. Uh, your online presence can be very disjointed uh, if you if you don't have a goal uh, that you're following. So here, I, instead of simply saying Vic.co wishes to, uh, instead of saying Vic.co is about websites, you know, I went into more detail and I said uh, social media, interact with customers, get in, into Instagram in a visual way. So I'm having the maybe I don't have the full language to say what I want to do. But in this sort of document, you have the space to write that down and think about it and change it as time goes on. On the notes that I'll write here, supplement what do you want to accomplish online. The optimal word is online, because if I've got the example of Victor's Bakery, in the real world, what I want to do is sell cupcakes. I want to sell baked goods, cookies, and birthday cakes, and all of that in the real world. I can't exactly sell um, those things online in, in, in terms of someone walks into the bakery, they buy the product, they walk out. If I'm selling it online, I have to think about it in a different way because then I have to deal with shipping and handling and taxation in that way. Think about the challenges of running your business online. Maybe not as fast as in person. Maybe more expensive than in person. What other challenges would you think exist at doing business online as opposed to in the real world? Shipping and all of that, um, shipping, delivery, so time, time, uh, access time of product, anything else? What's also different or a challenge of online compared to in person? Reaching your target market. Reaching target market, sure. Yeah. More mm -hmm. Reaching target market, more competition. More competition, that, that's a good one because uh, I may be the only, uh, you know, uh, vegan organic uh, pet sitting company in my uh, area uh, in the city. But uh, if I then go online, I may have that much more competition and definitely for a lot of retail and products. You're not the only place where I can buy, you know, pillowcases. You're not the only place uh, that I can hire for web design so much more competition. So, um... A specific challenge for my business is for them to be able to see the quality of the product. Mm, not tangible. Product's not tangible. So, that happens a lot um, in, in many spaces. Uh, one that maybe we've all seen is clothing, and I can't uh, actually wear the shirt until I get it, then I don't like it and have to return it. Yes? I think a big one that goes into the competition is just like the idea of brand, you know, and trust. Mm -hmm. So you know, being a sole practitioner or a small business, it is tougher because most people are going to trust a larger, you know, mm -hmm. not like, and, and Amazon's even enough. Yeah. So I think the, you know, kind of the, the branding, you know, and Trust yeah, there's established companies. Amazon's been around, if you, if you didn't know, Amazon's been around for more than 20 years. It doesn't feel like that, perhaps, but if you think about it, they've been around since the 90s. And last time I checked, the 90s was 18 to uh, 20, 30 years ago, wasn't it? 
uh, if my math is right, maybe. But um, it is. it was a while ago. And uh, the internet as we know it now um, was uh, invented in 1989. Um, the, uh, the websites, the World Wide Web that we visit, has been around since about 1989. Uh, it started to get into the popular culture in the mid-90s, 95, 96, around there. And then now it, it permeates our life. But that aspect of the internet that's, you know, 30 years old, uh, the technical um, infrastructure is going to be 30 years old next year. The internet has been around since the 60s, but it wasn't really in popular culture for a long time. It wasn't very easily accessible. It was accessible in, um, you know, government organizations, military organizations, educational organizations. But the internet, the web that we see nowadays, is about to be 30 years old. And a place like Amazon, with such an established base of over 20 years, they definitely have that, um, that, uh, that head start with us. So we'll talk about how we can handle that once we don't have that head start. So, question on that specific point. What about working under the umbrella of Amazon? Yeah, anything it, it, that helps your brand is a tool that might be useful if it's uh, priced right, if it's in your favor, if it's in your philosophy and such, then yes, any tool out there. I could sell directly on my website, I could sell on Amazon, I could sell on eBay, I could sell on Etsy, there's so many places, Smug Mug, etc. There's so many places to sell, it's all just a tool. And um, uh, oftentimes the barriers to entry are pretty low compared to real world. I have to have uh, maybe more investment in the real world to sell and an online perhaps to start off not as much and that way I can kind of uh, try different things out and then pick and choose the best thing for me. Okay, so more about this what question, what do you want to accomplish online? Uh, so obviously, Selling products is like the obvious thing that people will say. But just like in the real world, if I were to say, I've got a business on Main Street, and my goal is to sell products. So obviously, I'm easily going to do that. No. In the real world, it's hard to sell or whatever your goal of your business is. And so it is also in the digital world. So if having just a response of selling products if that's my only response, uh, it's not going to help too much. Uh, in the real world, uh, what might you need to do to uh, sell products, get the word out? You know, how do you, what do you think you do besides uh, saying, I'm going to sell products in the real world? Advertising, exactly. Advertise. Anything else? We can say advertising is a very big umbrella for all of this because uh, forms of advertising, so billboards, um, what's that? Print ads, exactly. Then that goes to radio ads, TV ads, etc. So advertising is a big umbrella. Uh, remember those classic business cards? Those still work. You meet someone, uh, you give them your business card, they remember you in that business card. Perhaps not everyone does business cards like before, but uh, it's sort of like vinyl in that everyone was listening to vinyl records, then we went to cassettes and CDs and then streaming, but then vinyl was still always there for the aficionados, and now vinyl is back like, uh, you know, kind of a cool retro thing, perhaps, and it, it, it's there. So business cards, I've read some blogs about that's kind of like, uh, maybe it had been passe for a long time because, well, I'll, I'll shoot you an email. Uh, will communicate online somehow and then a business card a little piece of paper is not necessary anymore I remember years ago there was also this this app that everyone was going crazy for I think it was simply called bump the bump app that you just had your phone you bumped it with someone else's phone and it would transfer the data to their phone 
Now, I haven't seen those in a while, but that was very hot a few years ago, a few versions ago. Yeah, you know, you don't want to crack that screen. So uh, it was uh, it was hot at, at a moment because it was so high tech. And then uh, business cards, maybe as a sort of a retro sort of thing, especially having a nice business card with some nice spot, spot varnish or, um, you know, foil on it or, or cool texture that people still like that you stand out from the plain old business card with the plain old uh, you know vista print I'm not putting down vista print those are my first cards too but uh, once you get it uh, with a cool style that the business card is a form of advertising too um, so the advertising also then, if that's going to be done in the real world, it's also got to be done in the digital world. So if all of this is real world, <laughs> digital world, what are some examples of digital world advertising? Banners. Uh, web banners, sure. What's that? Social media specifically. Oh, Facebook. Facebook. YouTube. Oops. Electronic coupons. E coupons, sure. Newsletters. Pinterest, etc. So in the digital world, we have advertising. So the point of this is still on the first question. What do you want to accomplish online? It's not just saying, I'm going to sell products. Uh, you also have to think about, well, what do I need? What would I have needed to do in the real world to succeed in my business? And what are the digital analogs for that uh, when I get into uh, the web? So there's in the real world versus the digital world. Let me ask you this in a more conceptually different sort of way. Um, repeat customers, loyalty, uh, satisfied clientele, is that something you need to care about in the digital world or the real world? Both. 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 Yes. In the in the real world, well, I want people to come to my business on a regular basis. Uh, so we have here loyalty. Uh, in the real world, uh, what might an example of loyalty be in your real world business? Membership, yes. Anything else? Points. Uh, just one moment. What's it? Points. Points. Yes. And then what, what was that there? Okay, yeah. Points, rewards, all of that. Uh, exactly. Those, you know, uh, punch cards. Those little. Uh, you go to some restaurants maybe and they've got a little card and they punch it and then you add that. That's points, membership. That's all very, very similar. Yeah. Like birthday things. Oh, okay, yeah. Promos. Birthday promos, yeah. So, real life um, loyalty programs. Well, again, if I, didn't note, if I didn't note that as real life, that's exactly digital. Uh, there's versions of digital for that as well. Uh, membership. I could have a website where I've got a private store, where you can only have access to it in a uh, in a certain way if you pay for it, or if you have some sort of membership that you have set up. Uh, points and accumulating sales and such. That's in the digital world as well. Birthday promos. Very easy uh, online as well with newsletters and emails and all of that. So in the digital world, you should also think about engaging in, in loyalty programs, uh, as you might do or should do in the real world. 
So that's a lot, a lot of examples there to think about what do you want to accomplish. If, you're, if, I, if you were doing this as an assignment for my other class, my class where it is grades and all of that, and you just simply turned it in with that part about selling my paintings online, uh, you would get a nice C- minus on that because uh, that's average. And we had so many examples here of what more you could do, what more you could think about doing, and what you should be doing in the real world, in the digital world, once you mention these things and, and get more specific about how you would try to do these things, then you'd get the better grade, you know, A minus. <laughs> so um, that's that first section. Any, any further questions on this first section? I have one question on that. Do you strive, do you think, to go for one big solution of the whole thing in the beginning, or is that going to be a living thing that you're going to just keep on? It's usually a living thing. It evolves as you uh, understand your company better, your customers better, and you find new things. Facebook is the big social network that everyone should get on, um, global scandals notwithstanding. And um, it is a good way to reach an audience. But it might not be the only one, maybe because of the recent um, negative press of Facebook maybe another social network comes out or or one that's already been out there that's been established becomes ascendant and I need to also get on that one or maybe new technology comes out and so yes it's gonna change um, the big companies they have something as a starting point and then that changes as the landscape itself changes too okay so this one, who is your target audience? Um, it's important to focus on a target audience. It's nice to say that everyone would be interested in my product, but it isn't true in the real world. Who are the people that would like to know about your product? What's their age, gender, economic group, musical style, etc.? In short, who would care about your product? In essence, we're creating a persona of a potential client. The example here, the people who want to hire Vic.co are people that are trendy but know what they want. They are people that are in their 30s who are successful, own their own company, need a website, and know the value of web design. So if Vic.co, the fictional web design company, if its goal is to make websites for clients, and they simply have the answer of who is your target audience, who, who, do, you want, who do you want to sell websites to, and they say everyone, well, again, that in if this was a graded class, that would actually be a D plus, because that generic answer of everyone wants a website or everyone wants uh, a lawyer or everyone wants a daycare center or everyone, no, it doesn't work in the digital world or in the real world. The answer of everyone, when you try to reach everyone, you don't reach anyone because you're not you're not targeting. Uh, targeting is very important in the real world. Um, for example, uh, Coca-Cola, Dasani, water, and Powerade, what do they have in common? The liquid drinks. Yes, and who owns them? They're owned by, They're owned by one parent company. Uh, sugar water, real water, sports water, right? They're all uh, forms of liquid. Uh, but they're all form, uh, they're all owned by the same company, and that one company is marketing a product to a very specific audience. They want to sell all of that, but it's a specific audience. Uh, you know, people that, that want to drink a soda, nostalgia for it, whatever, kids. Okay, there's the Coke. Uh, people that want, you know, regular old water for hydration and such, there's that product. People that want, that, that are active and, and work out or, or whatever, and need the electrolytes or whatever is in it, there's that product. So a company is, one company has several products that they're marketing to a target audience. Uh, the people that are drinking Powerade don't want a Coke because it's like, well, it's too much sugar and it doesn't have the electrolytes or whatever. People that are drinking the, uh, the Coke, they, they're usually, well, I don't want that Powerade because it's not, it's too healthy. And then people that drink water know better, right? So uh, the target audience is defined for each of those products. For yourself, you also have to deal with that. So on target audience, say no, not everyone. 
will want your product. If you have a persona, I'll define that in a moment, if you have a persona in mind, you'll be able to market or target your product to the right people and hopefully get more results, sales or whatever. Uh, although we talked previously about conversions, oftentimes people think conversion is the sale, but I talked about how conversions mean many things. Conversions are any result that you get, basically. So an example of this that happened uh, to me in the real world. Uh, so someone had approached my company for you know, a website and an online presence for their product. We sit down with potential customers or clients and start to talk about these various things in, a, in, a, in the first consultation. And we try to hammer out a few things early on, which will then evolve as we further work with the client. But we ask, of course, early on, uh, so who are you selling your product to? Who would care about your product? Of course, the answer was everyone. But it wasn't, because they were selling baby strollers. So obviously, not everyone wants a baby stroller. Obviously, not every parent wants a baby stroller. At a certain point, you don't need a baby stroller anymore. So the product, so that was clearly the wrong answer there. No, not everyone wants that product or needs that product. As we further talk with a client, we figured out that for them, what they wanted to uh, target were first-time parents. Now, there's parents, of course, that have children for the first time and then more children, but they wanted to focus on the first-time parents. They wanted to focus on young, first-time Latino parents. So, okay, now we're talking. Now we've got uh, an audience that we can uh, target more. Um, we might relate to the audience. We might know how they think uh, once you get that detailed. <coughs> so we can say here, wrong, right. Everyone wants my product compared to every young um, Latino uh, the current term is Latinx, actually. Uh, every young Latinx uh, first-time um, parent wants my product. Okay, more detailed. Um, young Latinx first-time parent. That's a better answer. Uh, not for the purposes of getting a better grade in the class, of course, but because that's what's going to actually help you in the real world. Like I said about those three kinds of beverages, they are targeted at a certain audience from the same company. So what, uh, does anyone have examples like in the real world or digital? What, what's a product that you've figured out or that you know, well, this product is specifically marketed for this group? Anyone have an opinion on that? Yeah. Coke Zero. Coke Zero. Who's the target audience of Coke Zero? Men. And they don't want diet soda. Well, it does sound cooler, Coke Zero, based the, uh, contrasted with diet. Okay, interesting. Didn't know that. I, I believe it, but interesting. <laughs> Any anything else? Maybe that uh, maybe maybe just an opinion. I think this product is marketed to this audience. I can't think of any too. It's it's too early. But uh, yeah, uh, target audience. Um, they are then going to create all of their marketing material to focus on that audience. Maybe uh, putting prod their product advertisements in places where, where men might see it. So what, what could be avenues where uh, Coke Zero product could be marketed at? Gyms. Gyms, sure. 
Sporting events. Sporting events. Sporting events. TV channels. Next you know, to the ESPN. Razors. Next to the Razors. <laughs> Store placement. WWE. Placement. Okay. Yes. Okay. So, uh, the. Uh, what about uh, like men's magazines? Auto magazines. Auto. Yeah. Uh, so, we have various places where we can target this product to the right uh, target audience. Let me get back to the term over here, persona. Persona. A fictional representation, actually backwards, a real representation of a fictional person. Okay, a persona. Big companies use a tactic in marketing where they invent a person and that's their target audience. So, create a person and their details as a means to market to an audience. So I'm going to create Janet. She's uh, in her 40s to 60s. Actually, they're much more detailed. She's 46 years old. Um, born in Sacramento. Lives in San Diego graduated from, etc., etc. They create a person, several people, because then you have something tangible to go toward. I need to create a product, I mean, I need to create marketing for my product that will appeal to a 46-year-old living in San Diego that graduated from XYZ. So, this is a persona. It is one or more fictional people based on plausible demographic data that then you will cater your marketing efforts or direct your marketing efforts toward. Kids, no, married, yes, etc. As much detail as would make sense. So then you know you're you're then setting you're you're going much more focused into your target audience uh, up here where where it was uh, young Latinx first time parents uh, that could also be much more uh, detailed uh, you know second generation young parents um, growing up here or there and and so forth because then I'm gonna get on Facebook. And I can create marketing campaigns in Facebook and Twitter and all of those companies to target these audiences. These social networks have so much data on us that we mostly give away without really paying attention that these networks have all of this demographic information which we can tap into. We can create content in the social networks that targets these exact audiences. Instead of putting a tweet out into the world that no one can see because I have no followers, I can create a tweet and specifically target it to this audience. Um, usually not for free. That's where the networks often make their money. If you want to be able to target your, your tweet or your Instagram post or whatever to a specific audience, that's when you're going to start to pay the networks. Uh, but it can be as little as a dollar per campaign, and it can be up to as how much you got. They'll take as much as you want to pay them. So just out of curiosity, remember any of these concepts, you can go out further and educate yourself more on them. I'm going to do a quick search here. Uh, examples of business personas.
So here is right away in this search that I got, the beginner's guide to creating marketing personas. I'm going to put that in the notes, but this is just one of the first results that I got. This is also a definition over here, persona, fictional character. I'm going to put this link in the notes. Article on crafting personas. Let's see what they say. A marketing persona is a composite sketch of a key segment of your audience. For content marketing purposes, social media and such, you need personas to help you deliver content that will be most relevant and useful to your audience. It is recommended that you make three to five personas. You can actually see examples on one of the links. So this can be pretty advanced because it can go into uh, areas such as values and fears. Because as I said previously, marketing in one sense can be broken down, advertising and such can be broken down is uh, something that makes you feel bad because then they have the solution for it. You have bad breath, here's our mouthwash. Uh, your hair is not on point, here's our hair product. Uh, your family doesn't love you. Here's a theme park. So uh, they, a lot of this marketing is uh, just trying to convince you of something. So this can be pretty advanced. This is a whole college degree uh, of marketing. This obviously in our class we were scratching the surface. It's the tip of the tip of the iceberg. Uh, but obviously you can go online and do all the research that you want. And this article seems very good. So I put that in the links. I put that in the notes. Step by step guide, too. So, all of that is related to this second point who is your target audience? Uh, once you know that, you can start to target uh, who uh, would be more interested in your product and create content that targets them. Let's get one more, then we'll take a break. Do you have aspirational competition? It's good to have role models, both in real life and in business. Is there a business you see that makes you think, I want to be like that? Or a business that makes you think, I want to do that, but better? List a company, person, brand, whatever, that you feel is in competition with you, but that you would like to emulate. Why do you want to emulate them? The example here, Vic.co feels that XY Designs is our aspirational competition because they are well known in the field of web design and their style is unique and modern. They use Pinterest expertly. Uh, so competition, we've, we've talked about how you're, you're not the only company in your niche. There's so much competition, especially online. So aspirational competition who is a competitor in your industry space niche whatever you want to call it um, what do you like about them how are they successful How similar and different are they from you? Purpose. To see what's working for them so you can adapt it to your own purpose to succeed. It's a version, a variation of 
competitor analysis. When one soda pop company uh, puts out a product, the other ones take note. The other ones go buy their soda to test it in their lab and see how we can make a better version of their cherry, uh, their cherry vanilla cola. Have you uh, been to those vending machines that have 500 soda flavors? Uh, those little touch screens you pick uh, soda flavors. I remember when there was Coca-Cola, and then when Cherry Coke came out, then there was Vanilla Coke, then there was Lime Coke, and then now in those vending machines, it's just a push of a button because they just mix the formula. You can get a Cherry Lime Strawberry Coke if you want. So someone thought of that first. Uh, one of the cola companies, I guess, thought of it first, and then... The other cola companies do the same thing. You can get cherry, vanilla, Dr. Pepper, which I'm sure all of those come from like the same company anyway. Uh, so you need to see the competition to see what you can do. So here's an example from the real world. Uh, this restaurant client uh, that, we, that we've worked with, um, they, uh, they're a restaurant, right? So we ask them, uh, who do you think is your competition? Who do you want to be like? Who do you see as successful and you want to get to their level? And they said, uh, well, we want to be like Phil's Barbecue. Now, if you know San Diego, you've probably heard of at least Phil's Barbecue and maybe eaten there, but it's a very famous San Diego barbecue joint. Now, obviously, uh, you know, Kansas City barbecue aficionados will scoff at it or whatever. Everyone's going to fight you about barbecue. But... Uh, San Diego barbecue often is uh, famous, Phil's barbecue, uh, if deserved or not. But the reason for going further, well, why did you why did you pick them? You are a Mexican food restaurant. You are a lamb focused Mexican food restaurant, traditional Mexican lamb barbecue, barbacoa de borrego. So you're saying your competition is a classic American style barbecue you know with sweet sauce and all of that compared to Mexican lamb barbecue it's not beef it's lamb and it doesn't have sauce it's not sweet like that version well it makes sense because Phil's barbecue the, the reason that's the competition for this Mexican restaurant is uh, or aspirational competition is because they are famous in their in their niche they have a line out the door like every day of the week and there's a little sign that says you know wait time from here 45 minutes that sounds like a ride at Disneyland but it's just to get into the restaurant to to eat so this client has that goal they're aspiring to be that at one point that we've got a line out the door waiting every day of the week to get in we've got we're being synonymous with when we talk about Mexican food in San Diego, we want our name to be at the top. Uh, so it doesn't have to be direct competition. They're both restaurants. That's close enough. One is uh, Mexican food. One is American food. That's different there, but they're both food. But they're an aspiration. So what is another company that you want to be like? Can you identify what you define as successful? That then leads to eventually, what can I do that they do, but in my way? So Phil's Barbecue now, they sell their barbecue sauce, their secret recipe barbecue sauce. They sell it. You can put it on your own, on your own meats. Uh, they drive around with uh, a, a van. They drive around with, you know, company vans that have their marketing all over the, the van. Those are just a couple of ideas. Well, what can this client do? Can you put out the, the secret recipe sauce or powder or whatever of your of your brand of barbacoa, barbecue. Can you uh, have a company van or other sort of signage or marketing materials? So once you identify what 
what uh, what is successful in other companies you can try to do a version this is obviously not stealing what they're doing but it's your own version you're obviously not going to take you know their logo and put it on your products but you're going to see what does their logo look like what's its style circular logo with certain colors text etc can i do a version of mine with our company colors with our own unique text etc so let's take our first break uh, any any questions on this uh, question or this section first let's take our first break and uh, we'll be back in 10 minutes it's uh, 10 20 we'll be back at 10 30.